All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Sorry about that. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And yes, yes, this is going to be a long one. This is going to be a long ass vlog because I have a lot, a lot of stuff to talk about. My vlog notes are ridiculous. I may gloss over a couple things, but we are going to do talk about a little bit of advocacy at the top, including formaldehyde nonsense that's happening all over the place. Um, we're going to taste some beer, do some first impressions, uh, definitely do some shout outs, as well as a retro vaping time and a review for a mech mod somewhere in there that didn't quite make it into its own, uh, into its own video. But yes, this is the vlog. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Uh, got a lot on tap, like I just said. The first thing I want to talk about is advocacy. Man, there's a lot going on uh, legislatively in the world right now. Both Virginia and Washington are and New York uh, are trying, New York State, that is, are trying to pass like crazy, crazy bills that would heavily, heavily tax things on uh on the wholesale end, not on the user end, but on the wholesale end. And the problem with this is if there's heavy wholesale taxes, that means that, so here's shop. This is a shop. This is Allen's Vape Emporium. Now, Allen has been running his Vape Emporium for like a year now, and he can buy from Wholesaler X. They make, uh, I don't know, Bombies or something. He can wholesale their product at a low cost, mark it up, and then sell it to the consumer. That's, that's capitalism. That's how this works. So in this process of getting products from the wholesaler, from Bombies, to Allen's Vape Emporium, right as it's going about here, the government comes in and goes, nope, we want to tax the fuck out of that so that poor Allen over here is stuck paying way more for the product he's getting, taxes on it. So before he was getting, let's say, one bottle of Bombies for five bucks. Now he's getting one bottle of Bombies for whatever they tax on it, 75%, 95% in some states. Well, suddenly he goes, well, I can't afford that. I can't afford to stay in business and pay these heavy wholesale taxes. So Allen's Vape Emporium, that has been providing him an income for the last year and has been converting all of these smokers over to the much better lifestyle of vaping, he can't afford to operate his business. Allen's Vape Emporium, sorry. Sorry, Allen. We all feel bad for Allen right now, don't we? Allen's not even a real guy. And this is going to happen to real guys. So just be informed on what's happening in your state take some time to actually give a shit because although it may not directly affect you which a lot of these do and in that case yes it would it's affecting shops it's affecting businesses it's affecting where you can vape how accessible and how easy to get your vape stuff uh will be it's not good now the big thing that's happening everywhere fucking everywhere sorry is formaldehyde. Oh, we're all vaping. You didn't know we're all vaping formaldehyde. How did you not know that we're all vaping formaldehyde? Well, the bummer part is that we're not actually all vaping. Uh, we're not all actually vaping formaldehyde. I apologize. I'm going to read this off of my iPad because it's, uh, well, it's great. And I'll post a link in the description uh, to where this, uh, this resides. Uh, reason.com. Oh, reason.com. You are just a great website. Uh, their headline says, Anti-vaping researchers called out for misleading cancer exaggerations. What? Misleading cancer exaggerations? So, <sighs> the New England Journal of Medicine posted a study recently on the, 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 the effects of vapor and vaporizing those liquids. Uh, and said that uh, vapor shows high levels of formaldehyde. Um, the authors, they, they actually said this, they actually printed this, uh, higher cancer risk than smoking. Does that not sound like the most alarmist, crazy talk that you ever, higher cancer risk than smoking. Um, this drives me insane. Uh, but, some people have pointed out 
that people avoid vaping at these high voltages because it produces very unpleasant flavors. Yes, that makes sense. Greg Connolly said it, uh, I believe on Facebook, but it, it was linked to some other article, and I don't have that article, but Greg Connolly, who, who is one of my personal heroes, he said it best when he said, sure, you can also take a steak and put it on the grill for hours and hours and produce all these awful burnt carcinogens on there, but nobody's going to eat it because it's horribly burnt and tastes awful. The same thing applies to vaping. Uh, in this study, the one study that was done where they produced these formaldehyde, you know, whatever levels, were done uh, at extremely high wattages on clearomizers. Now, if any of us have any experience with clearomizers, we know that they're terrible, that they don't wick properly, and I'm not, I have not a shadow of a doubt in my mind that what was happening is they were just vaping insanely dry burnt hits at a very, very high wattage. Now, the number one email that I get is, why does my thing taste burnt? Why does this taste burnt? Why does my cardo tank burnt? Why does my clearomizer taste burnt? I can't, I can't vape it past three volts. I can't, what the shit, Google? Why did you just open like that? can't vape it past this wattage, I can't vape it past four watts because it just tastes burnt. Uh, Matt, whom I consider a very good friend, Matt from Suck My Mod, who I love in, to the ground, he recently did a video, um, it, it's fantastic, I'll post a link to it in the description, where he, he went to his local brick and mortar store, got a clearomizer, vaped it at a really high wattage, and just uh, comedy ensued. And he wasn't doing it for comedy, he was doing it to show people that no one uses it under these circumstances. You know what I mean? The Greg Connolly, uh, you know, analogy of burning the hell out of a steak, and yeah, it's gonna produce some nasty shit on there, but also nobody's gonna eat it. It's, it's very, very similar to that. I can't think of a better analogy. I was driving around the other day trying to think of an analogy like, oh, it's like uh, taking a car and driving it into a brick wall. No, that doesn't work. I'll just use Greg's. I'll just use Greg's analogy of the uh, of the situation. Uh, the, this this New York Times columnist uh, spoke to one of the study's authors. He spoke to David Payton. He insisted that the study had been mischaracterized. All it was meant to do, he said, was compare the levels of formaldehyde in e-cigarettes versus cigarettes. It is exceedingly frustrating to me that we are being associated with saying that e-cigarettes are more dangerous than cigarettes. This is one of the authors of the study saying this. He added, that is a fact not in evidence. They have no evidence that e-cigarettes are more dangerous and produce more carcinogens than cigarettes. The author of the study said it himself. He said it was misrepresented. <sighs> when I read him the tweet from the New England Journal of Medicine, authors project higher cancer risk than smoking, he sounded horrified. I didn't see that tweet, he said. I regret that, and that is not my opinion. The author of the study said that is not my opinion. Based on the evidence produced, that is not my opinion. Fantastic. There's a lot we don't know about e-cigarettes, said Peyton toward the end of our conversation, and he is right about that. E-cigarettes are still know that they need to be studied carefully. I absolutely agree with that, and I do believe that science will prevail in the end. Perhaps the next time they will produce something that doesn't serve mainly as a scare tactic to keep smokers away from cigarettes. Although there is no doubt that, smoking switch, that smokers switching to electronic cigarettes substantially reduce the risk to their health. Some tobacco control activists and health organizations discourage smokers from using electronic, electronic cigarettes and lobby policymakers to reduce electronic use by draconian regulation. Uh... Yes, I will post a link in the description uh, to this video. Um, that is crazy. That is crazy talk. Uh, the author, the author of the study said that is not my opinion. The author of the study said that is not my opinion. Keep that in mind. We're not vaping formaldehyde. None of us are vaping formaldehyde.
that's uh, that's all that's all I have to say about that. Um, I do want to taste some beer, but real quick, I just want to call out Senator Mark Leno. Uh, he's a lunatic. He is out of his goddamn mind. Um, a uh, user on Reddit uh, during my AMA, which I'm going to touch on briefly in a second. Oh, I don't remember his name. He asked me to call out Senator Mark Leno. Now, I'm going to post a link in the description uh, to this website. Um, Senator Mark Leno says that vaping is no different than smoking. And it's interesting because the tr- top contributors of cash money to his campaign to run for senator... It's mostly Big Pharma, which is weird because the sale of vaping and electronic cigarettes directly impacts Big Pharma. Yes, uh, Glastromine, Glastromine, uh, Gentech, Baxter Healthcare Corporation, uh, Pharma, Adventist Pharmaceuticals. That's right. All of you contributed to Senator Mark Leno and... uh, that's just, that could, that could just be a really strange coincidence. But uh, there is this, before we get to beer, continuing on Mr. Senator Mark Leno. Uh, the article reads, e-cigarettes were once a novelty. <laughs> no, uh, but they are now becoming increasingly popular. The FDA says it's concerned about the health risks, and Leno says their use should be limited. Limit, limit your use of these wonderful life-saving products. We don't even know what's in these concoctions, he said. Concoctions? That is a sensationalist, alarmist-sounding word. And yes, Mr. Leno, we actually do know exactly, precisely what is in these concoctions, as you call them. Um, yeah, he thinks it's a. Uh, he thinks it's worse than smoking. Of course, he's going off of this very, very flawed uh, New England Journal of Medicine formaldehyde study. He's building basically his whole platform on that flawed study. Vaping is now a multi-billion dollar industry, wholly unregulated, untaxed, operating on its own. Fucking A, that's right. That is exactly what it is doing. That, my friends, is the free market economy. That is the marketplace of ideas here in America. He couldn't have said more and a more American thing than that, except he said it like it was a negative thing. And as we know, there is great risk to public health, to the individual health of these users. You guys... Mark Leno, he's just looking out for your health. He just wants you to be healthy. He wants you to keep smoking cigarettes for now until we can absolutely prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that e-cigarettes are 100% safe and you're not in- ingesting uh, formaldehyde. Uh, I don't even know. I can't even... I can't even... I, I can't even... Get me some Ugg boots and a frappuccino because I can't even. This article is ridic- ridiculous. <sighs> anyway, uh, I'll post a link in the description to this, but uh, if you live in California and you vote, which I do both of those things, um, let's, uh, let's really come down on Senator Leno hard. I mean, hard, as hard as we can because because he's completely wrong and he's building his whole platform, his whole tyranny against e-cigarettes uh, based off of a flawed study. So now, now that we've covered that, I do want to get into some beer. So, uh, being uh, living in such and where I am and nonsense, uh, I'm very close to the Stone Brewery and uh, been there a couple times. Great food, delicious, delicious beer. And what I have right now, thankfully it's not in a cork, is uh, some Lucky Bastard from Stone. So this is the Lucky Bastard 2014. I'm going to be pouring it over my keyboard into a tulip-style glass. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to drinking this. I am a big fan of Stone and their brews. How's that, Ruby Roo? Is that a nice head on there? I plan on drinking through it like a man. Um, so clicking over to the Beer Advocate site, the Lucky Bastard 2014 has a 93 score, uh, which is crazy. This is an American Strong Ale anniversary blend of Arrogant Bastard to celebrate the 13-year anniversary. 
It's a dry hopped blend of Arrogant Bastard and Oak Aged Arrogant Bastard and Double Bastard. So there are really three beers going on here. There's the dry hop, the Oak Aged, and the Double Bastard all kind of coalescing and, and, and dancing around in this cup. And uh, I'm just very, very excited. So cheers. Here's to you. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Um, so... <laughs> So it tastes, to me, like if you... It, it, they say it's an American strong ale, which it is an American strong ale. What I'm getting is uh, a lot of upfront hoppiness. It kind of tastes like if you mixed a very strong like barrel-aged stout and with a, like a very, very intense IPA. So it's got a really big body, but it has a clean finish and a lot of upfront, uh, very IPA-ish hoppiness to it. Uh, it's quite carbonated. So I apologize, Sheik. I'm going to be burping. Robin, Stuart, Sheik, I apologize for that. So I'm going to be burping. It is very, very carbonated. Um, this is fantastic. Uh, the last time I was I was there, I was at the Stone Brewery. They had the uh, they had the Double Bastard on uh, on tap, and it was it was just wonderful. Um, I like being around all these breweries and being able to visit them and get things on tap that uh, I normally <clears throat> pardon me. I knew this was going to happen that I normally wouldn't be able to get. But yeah, right there. Lucky Bastard, coming out of the gate. That's fantastic. This is a good beer, and I'm going to continue consuming it uh, throughout this video. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. What now? Oh, shoot. What do I pair with Lucky Bastard? Didn't even think about this. Uh, how about Donut Pounder? That's good, but not what I'm looking for. This... This is probably going to be it. Um, I talked a little bit on my Reddit AMA, which I definitely right now want to give a shout out to everybody that took part in my AMA on Reddit. Had a great time. Just loads, loads of questions, loads of good questions. Some people called me out. We talked it out and we talked about music and, and beer and vaping and uh, advocacy and just we covered a whole lot of subjects. I had a great time. I did it for... Uh, roughly two hours. I posted the AMA at 3.45 in the afternoon, and it was at about 5.45 that I was like, this is a lot, and I'm going to call it because I, I have to get back to my other stuff. But man, I had a really great time there. Um, and if you have you seen on my Instagram, possibly, and in that thread, we talked about the, all the top secret juices I've been vaping. Uh, I wore the t-shirt last week. It's Grim Cult. It's a thing that's coming out, and I'm really excited about it. This is one of those juices, and I can't say exactly right now what it is or what's in it, uh, but it, it's going to pair very well with this lucky bastard. I just know it. It is, let's say it's from a British metal band. What? What? Who could that be? A British metal band? That's exactly what I was looking for, right there. And I like to do this too, watch. Oh, that's fun. That's pairing up, uh, that's pairing up very well. I apologize, I have my windows open and there's a lot of, uh, well, there's a lot of people walking around and talking about. So yeah, beer, that is good times. So let's get into some shout outs. I wanna give a shout out right now to uh, Select Vape. Man, they are just cool. Cool, cool people. All of their stuff is done on their eBay page, and they specialize in, like, kits, like mod kits. So you can get a mod batteries juice or a mod batteries and an atomizer or a charger a batteries and an atomizer with some wicks. And they have these kits that they throw together, and they recently sent me a package that contained one of these. So this is like a uh, sort of a clear plastic unregulated box mod and I just thought it looked so so cool I've got it going right now with the El Cabron atomizer and it's just been great this arrived today along with some I, I haven't seen these before premier pre-coiled hybrid wires 
22 gauge. So this is they use they, these are built with niachrome and they're just uh, they're just uh, well they're just coils. They look like uh, they look like a pre-made little I mean really well made little coils. Um, I'm excited to try these out. Uh, I'm going to be using them a little bit later. And uh, yeah, so uh, huge shout out to Select Vape. They have screaming deals. This mod with two batteries, what was the deal? Let me just go and, and look at what it was because I know what it was. Um, I'll post a link to their to their eBay page in, in the profile to this, uh, or in the... <sighs> In the description to this video, ABS clear box mod dual 18650 unregulated uh, parallel box mod holds two 18650 batteries unregulated uh, 510 magnetic door low voltage drop uh, blah 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 how to order simply email come on uh, $39 this mod plus two batteries $39 that is a stupid deal that is such a good deal. It's an unregulated box, and it's thirty nine bucks. So thank you so much, Select Vape. Uh, thank you so much, Select Vape, for sending that my way. And I will post a link in there in the description. Of course, yes. I'm gonna give a big shout out to everybody that took place in the AMA on Reddit yesterday, uh, or what day was that? That wasn't yesterday. That was Tuesday. It was really fun. I had a, I had a really good time, and I hope that you guys like having me there because it was it was really cool. I I had a really I had a really great time. I like talking about beer, I like talking about music, and I like talking about vaping. So all of that kind of in a two-hour chunk. And then some of my old friends that I haven't talked to in a while showed up. Wonton of VC, uh, Val was there, um, and and it was and it was fun. Um, additionally, um, I'm gonna be. Uh, this isn't really a shout out, but uh, I'm gonna be over at the Vapor Dynasty Expo in October. Um, gonna be great i'm gonna be there uh namber juice is gonna be there it's gonna be really really uh really good times i apologize i'm getting this for my next shout out should be really fun times i didn't go to the vapor dynasty expo last year that's where twisted and matt had their like uh you know uh whatever robot wrestling thing going on i'm not really sure what was going on there um so so yeah uh also real quick want to give a shout out to Stig. So I was on a podcast a long time ago called Domp Radio, and let's get uh, let's get over there. Yes, Damp Radio. Although I think they call it Domp Radio. Uh, let's uh, let's see. Yes, yes, Domp Radio. So uh, they are based out of Denmark. And uh, I was talking to Stig, and Stig was telling me that in Denmark, they vape a lot of menthol, like they're menthol crazy. And Stig says, hey, I would love to send you some menthol juices. So I said, sure, sure. So eventually from Denmark, these menthol juices got to me. And he just makes them himself, and they are, they are crazy. They are the most mentholated juices I, uh, wow, they're the most mentholated juices I've ever had. Why? Why are you? Why are you temperature protecting me? Fucking DNA forty. It, it it does this, and I'm gonna get into this in a second. But god damn it! No. Oh, temperature protected. Okay, so let's take this off. Let's press the button. Check atomizer. Let's put this back on. This shouldn't really be happening right now. It should say uh, new atomizer, right? When you take something off and you put it on, it should say like new new atomizer. Fucking bullshit. Okay, I'm gonna turn my temperature protection uh, way, way up because I'm sick of this bullshit. I apologize. Yes, temperature protection off. Now. Heavenly God, 
heavenly. Oh, now it's reading 0 0.7 ohms. You suck. I don't know why I'm having such a problem with this Vapor Shark DNA 40. It is freaking me out. So I'm going to turn the wattage way back down. Oh, now it's reading 0.4. The ohms are just jumping all over the place, which is fine. This is a nickel wire uh, coil in here. All I wanted to do was vape some menthol juice. These are the most intense menthol juices I've ever had. I used to be a really, really big menthol guy. And I, I don't know why I stopped vaping menthols. It's when you started dripping, I guess I just, I just stopped with the menthols. It's not going to pair well with this. But what are you going to do? I used to be a huge menthol guy. I loved the Prothol from Vaporcast store. I loved, uh, what was the one, Bifrost? What was the one from uh, Johnson Creek? Doesn't really matter. But I used to be a big menthol guy. These remind me of those really intense, very slightly sweet, but just very, very intense menthol juices. So uh, this is a nickel build uh, on these coils. And you know what? Before we get to that, I just wanted to give Stig a shout out. Stig sent me menthol juices. And thank you. Thank you, Stig. I got them. And they are uh, really reminding me of, of, my old, uh, of my old menthol days. But uh, I actually, there is one shout out that I wanted to do. Uh, Yvonne. Yvonne, Yvonne, Yvonne. So Yvonne sent me an email and said, uh, hello Nick, I just wanted to say that my husband has been vaping for two years, one of which was while he was deployed in Afghanistan. I wasn't sure if he was going to, going to endure all of the sand, but he's home now and still going strong. He is building his own coils, advocating for freedom to vape, and has converted a handful of people over to vaping, and he watches your program religiously. Uh, uh, not to mention, he's always promoting Namber Juice. Well, I appreciate that very much. Uh, I adore and admire his passion and drive to learn and educate. Anyhow, uh, we love what you do, your reviews, and we hope to meet you at a convention one day. If you could do a shout out for him one day, that would be great. He would be surprised. His name is Christopher. I'm going to butcher your last name, but Christopher and Yvonne absolutely consider yourself shouted out thank you so much for watching absolutely i really i mean i really appreciate that i like uh you know i like hearing from viewers that actually find my shit useful sometimes it gets a little ambiguous like well, is anybody watching this or am i doing this for my own amusement at this point but uh it's always great to hear thank you so much for your service christopher that uh that is fantastic and uh yeah keep uh Keep converting those smokers over to uh, over to electronic cigarettes. I had one more shout out that I wanted to do. Uh... Oh, that's right, uh, Douglas. So this is kind of more advocacy stuff. Hey, Nick, my name is Douglas. Uh, earlier today, I went to a meeting for vape advocacy, and everything I heard was incredible to say the least. I am in Indianapolis, Indiana, and apparently Indiana is trying to pass a bunch five. Bills that will literally put brick and mortar stores out of business immediately. This is not a joke. They want to pass a bill that bans all public vaping of any kind and a bill that requires any shop with a house brand, whether they make it there or not, to have a manufacturing license. With that license comes a 100-page booklet of rules and regulations that must be followed. On top of that, they are offering no grace period or grandfathered time frame for that license. It would be in effect as soon as the bill passed, but the paperwork won't be available until that time. And there's no turnover time from that point in the bill. They could take six months or a year to even process the paperwork. They are just being dicks and are trying to shut down businesses. 25% wholesale tax on all equipment and juice on top of a 7% sales tax uh, that's uh, 0.0089 cents per milligram of nicotine per mil of juice. That's almost $6 in taxes on a 30 mil bottle of 24 nick juice. Uh, please, we need to get the word out on this. I know there are vapors in Indiana that watch your videos. Uh, to help, they can contact Hoosier Vapors, HoosierVapors.com. I will post a link in the description and that they, uh, they can fill them in on what to do. We are about 150 vapors at this meeting and we have a couple lobbyists on our side, but we need to get everybody on our side. 
Uh, if this could make it into next week's vlog, that would be pivotal. We do not have much time. Thank you, Douglas, for sending that my way. That, uh, I mean, obviously, that's ridiculous. 25% wholesale tax on all equipment and juice on top of a 7% sales tax. So $6 and six dollars on a 30 mil bottle of 24-minute juice. So if you wholesale one bottle of juice for $5, and it's 24 nick, um, that juice is now costing you $11 to wholesale. And then you're going to be selling it for 20 something dollars plus 7% sales tax. That is, uh, that is ridiculous. But yeah, I'll post a link in the description to HoosierVapors.com where you can, uh, where you can, if you're in Indiana, even if you're not in Indiana, you can, uh, you can take some action. So I think that wraps up my shout outs segment uh we talked about a lot of stuff um yes yes i need a new camera absolutely i need a new camera i ruined it with my really fucking cool laser and uh, i need a camera i was thinking of getting a dslr camera right uh that might be really cool for shooting youtube videos i actually had my eye on this panasonic lumix fz 1000 camera it's a 4k video camera Oh, which could be really cool, which could be uh, really cool. Uh, my dad, whom I love into death, Fred, uh, his name is Fred, and he's he's just an amazing man. He uh, he was a professional photographer uh, for, you know, whatever, 30 plus years or something like this. So I, uh, I, I emailed him and said, you're the pro here, dad. What's a great DSLR camera I should get? Or should I get this Panasonic Lumix FZ1000? If anybody has any suggestions, I would definitely be open to hear it. I would like it to have a, an external microphone input, possibly, so that I can record video and audio at the same time. But yeah, I'm looking to upgrade my camera. I want to get something better that looks better. You know what I mean? This is my... This is my product. This is what I'm presenting to the world. And for you guys, I just want it to look as good as possible. There's a lot of people now watching it on their televisions. It's not just on mobile phones or on laptops anymore. It's on their big HD televisions. And a lot of shops show these videos on their big HD televisions. So I want the video to look mm, just sick as tits, as some people would say. Just want the video to look, uh, to look really good. So yes, I am... I am looking at a new camera. So now that all that is out of the way and we're a half hour into the video, this is going to be a long one. Let's do some first impressions. <laughs> all right. So the first first impression is this. Now, this is what I was fiddling with before. And I'm going to take this uh, silicone case off of it because the mod itself just looks really super cool. Vapor Shark sent me over my very first... Oh, my very first DNA 40. This is the new Vapor Shark 40 watt RDNA powered by Evolve. Um, been having some issues with it. They also sent along some nickel wire coil heads for both the sub tank. Uh, I had some previously for the Nautilus. So I'm rocking some nickel wire coil heads in here. The problem is now it says. 3 ohms. Before it was reading 7 ohms, or, or I'm sorry, let me rephrase, not 7 ohms, 0 0.7 ohms. Now it's reading 0 0.3 ohms. And when I first plugged it on, it was reading 0 0.14 ohms. And when it was reading 0 0.14 ohms, I had my temperature control set to 400 degrees, and that kicked in right away, knocked me down to 2 watts, which, that doesn't vape, so... Right now it's reading 0 0.3 ohms. Let's try to turn the temperature control back on. Click it five times, hold the up down. Uh, right now my temperature control is set to off. So let's knock it back down to 400 degrees. That's what I want, one, two, three, four, five. Now I see that it's set to 400, now it's reading 0 0.13 ohms. It's set to 19 watts. Nope. Now it's reading zero watts. It's not gonna fire at all temperature protected and now my battery says that it's uh well it says that it's empty even though it was just said it was full so let's lock it let's hold to change the temp let's put it up to 500 degrees no let's put it what's the highest you can go without having it be off 600 degrees one two three four five 
It's reading 0 0.13 ohms. It says my battery is dead. I'm getting no vape off of it. Oh, now it's saying my battery is full again. Saying my battery is full again. Nope, but it's uh, still at 600 degrees. I'm going to crank this up to 40 watts. I threw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I party. Nope, it's giving me 0.8 volts. Oh, and then it says temperature protected. Temperature protected. But I can hold these buttons down. One, two, three, four, five. I can hold these buttons down, change to hold the temp, and I can just turn the fucking thing off. One, two, three, four, five. Now it's giving me no temperature control, and it's reading 0 0.3 ohms again. That's funny. Why did it change? So I'm going to knock this back down to 20 watts. It's going to give me uh, some voltage here, and I'm actually going to be able to vape this now. Oh, it's good. And when it vapes, it's so good. The mod itself is beautiful. The, the logo on it is great. The feel of it, it feels like those old ego batteries and that's what I love about it so much I'm a tactile guy I get handsy from time to time and it just feels it's got this nice rubberized finish on here it feels substantial in your hand the button lights up and is clicky these buttons the up downs are both clicky and tactile I love the way this mod feels I just wish the DNA 40 board wasn't so fucking wonky man Anyway, I have it set to 20 watts right now. 20 watts, and now it's reading 0 0.4 ohms. Can somebody explain this to me? Explain this to me like I'm five. Why do the ohms change when I have my temperature control on and off? And why do the ohms change with the wattage? So if I turn this down to 13 watts, it reads 0 0.4 ohms. And it's a very weak way. Oh, now it's reading 0 0.6 ohms. Way to go. Way to go, Evolve. Okay, now it's reading 0 0.3 again at 11 watts. And it's a weak-ass vape. Oh, now it's reading 0 0.6. So I'm going to turn this back up to 20. Oh, now it's reading 0 0.44 ohms. Oh, now it's reading 0 0.67 ohms. It's still a good vape. I mean, it's vaping fine. But the display, the display is jumping all over the place. Let me put this Nautilus aside. Sorry. Ugh. And let me grab my uh, Kanger Subtank, the mini sized. Um, in the future, Maybe in a couple of weeks, maybe two weeks, I'm going to have the Kanger, all the Kanger sub tanks. So the full size, the mini, and the nano all together in one video. It's going to be fantastic. So now that I have this on here, oh, it's reading 0 0.2 ohms, 19 watts. Very, very weak vape. Oh, now it's reading 0 0.3 ohms. I'm just going to crank this fucking thing up to 40. See how, oh, now it's reading 0 0.19 ohms. That is a nice vape. That is a really nice vape. I'm actually going to turn this down. Let's go to 37 watts. Now it's reading 0 0.36 ohms. Are the ohms supposed to change like that? If they are, someone please tell me. I, I literally just got this. So I haven't watched any videos on for any R DNA 40s or DNA 40 devices. I didn't watch Phil's video. I didn't watch Rip's video. I didn't watch anybody else yet. I just want to try to figure this out on my own. But the ohms keep changing. One, two, three, four, five. Hold to change temp. I'm going to actually turn the temp to, let's say, 450 degrees. One, two, three, four, five. So it's set to 450 degrees. It's reading 0 0.19 ohms at 37 watts. And it works. Oh, now it's reading 0 0.16 ohms. So, I don't know, let's turn the wattage down. Let's turn the wattage to 32 watts. Seems to be working just fine. 
I still have to figure out this DNA board. But the mod itself, <laughs> I'm in love with it. The the feel, the finish, the substantialness of it. Um, I really, really, really enjoy using it. It just, it just looks cool, and it works really, really well. I just can't figure out this temperature thing. I don't know why my ohms are all over the place. It's uh, quite possibly making me insane. So another first impression that I want to talk about real fast is this. This is the MVP version 3. Look at that. It's got a dangly on the bottom now. Now this is the output, I believe, to a micro USB and then nothing, just a plastic. And this wire sits in here like that and it plugs into the bottom and the wire sits in here like that. And it sits, it's all flush on the bottom except for when you kind of pull this wire out. But you can easily plug this wire back in, squish it back into its little groovy grooves, and then you're good to go. It also has a full-size USB output as well as a mini USB input. Um, the fit and finish on it is very, very nice. It's not uh, rubberized in any way, but it does have a slightly uh, textured surface to it which makes it easy to hold the button is a very very stiff button it's much like the mvp version 2 i never got to try the 20 watt because i thought it was weird that they did the mvp the mvp 2 the mvp 20 watt and then right away released the mvp version 3 or at least announced it um, currently i have this new smoke tech vapor chaser tank on here which you may have seen on instagram this is turned all the way up to 30 watts and the display is very very helpful it's a big screen can you see this? 30 watts, it shows you your battery, your ohms, and the voltage that you're getting. 4.2 volts, fantastic. Great, this tank eh, maybe leaves a little bit to be desired. Um, you can't really fill it up all the way, which is annoying, but the mod itself, very, very nice. The button does not light up anymore around it, around the outside when you press it. Instead, there's a little LED indicator right there on the top, can you see it? Yep, that lights up when you press the button. So all you have to do is look straight down and you'll see that LED indicator. Now it's no secret that I love box mods and that the MVP version two was one of my go-to box mods for freaking ever. I used it with a K-Fun light and it was like my go-to. I just used it. I took it everywhere. I took it with me to every vape meet. I traveled out of the country with it. I just thought it was great. So it's nice. It's nice to have a new upgraded MVP that is the same dimensions as the old MVP. It's got the button on the side now rather than in the front, which is great. It's got a nice little display. Up down buttons are great. The inputs right there. It has the output if you need it. It's cool so far, man. I've been using it. I've been enjoying it. I've rocked it with some RDAs. I've rocked it with some tanks. It's been pretty fantastic. And uh, I just like using it. I like the form factor of the MVP. And I like Inakin as a company. I think they're a good stand-up company. Um, I know that Demetrius and Phil recently got to go to China. Oh, good for them. I didn't get to go. So maybe next time, uh, Inakin will invite me to China. And we can sit around and drink beer and fucking I'll introduce them to Clutch and we can rock out. But that doesn't matter. Inokin's a great company and the MVP version 3 I am, uh, I am a pretty big fan of. Well, seeing as how this first impressions is already going a little long, why not make it longer? Uh, the El Cabron Atomizer. Came, this came directly from the manufacturer of the, the Zatomizer. And ah, I've been enjoying it. I'm actually going to send this to Twisted Messes for him to build on. So if you're watching this, Mr. Twisted Messes, I'm going to send you this El Cabron Atomizer because I think it'll be more fun to build on than the Mako War. I was originally going to send him the Mako War to build on, but I'm going to send him this instead. Um, it has an interchangeable um, top cap. Right, so it's got a deck with enormous post holes in it. This is a dual 26 gauge, uh, no, dual 26 gauge parallel build, which for me, that's fancy. Uh, I'm a boring builder. I build 24 gauge dual coils and that's it. That's what I build, that's what I like. But these post holes are so big, 
I decided to try a ooh a parallel build on there, and it helped out. It helped fill the space in some of those post holes. Um, it fits together really nice. Uh, I found it to be eh, maybe very slightly leaky, kind of like the Dark Horse-ish. Uh, I like it much, much more than the Dark Horse. Performing great. Flavor's decent. Flavor's not fantastic, but the flavor is decent. But what I think is great is this chuff cap, chuff style cap, screws off. This comes off, and there's a lot of juice in there. Holy cow balls. That is a, that is a lot of juice. I apologize. Let me get my other uh, vapordye.com rag so I can soak up some of this juice. But it does come uh, with, a, with a standard issue top cap that you can use like a drip tip on. But I just took this chuff style cap and screwed it on there. And it's been, uh, it's been really great. It's a little bit wider than your average chuff cap. It's a little bit wider, but uh, but I've actually enjoyed it. In fact, where is the part that I'm looking for? I apologize, everybody. Let's, uh, let's get into the El Cabron box. Yeah, there it is. Perfect. And it even comes with its own super wide bore drip tip. Let's throw that on there. So I'm gonna throw this on here to, uh, you know, for the airflow. I'm gonna put the ring on there. It's set up for single coil builds as well. Then I'm gonna screw this on there. This is the non-chuff version of the top cap. Screws down. Yes, screws, whoops. Fucked up my airflow. This screws down, holds the airflow in place. And then it comes with its own wide bore drip tip. That uh, looks cool, works well. Airflow is much, much tighter, man. Oh, that's because I had it on single coil. Let's set up a dual coil. I had it set on single coil. Airflow is nice. Uh, it looks cool. It's got heat sinks kind of at the top and bottom. There is a goat on it. Not sure you can see it. It's the same goat that's on the box. That just looks cool. IMO. Comes with a Delrin. Uh, super wide board drip tip as well. So here, we can take this off of there. You can use a normal drip tip. Then you have this giant hole, and you can put this bastard in there. Look at that, that looks cool too. That's it. That's the way I'm gonna be rocking it from now on. Oh, this juice is menthol -y. So yeah. That's the El Cabron. I'm going to be spending some time with that as well in the near future. I'm going to put these pieces back in the box. So we did some shout-outs, some beer. We talked advocacy for a little bit. Thanks to everybody on Reddit. Um, I'm getting a text. That's what that Chewbacca sound is. So right now, let's get into some retro vaping. Okay, so, retro vaping. I saw, I apologize, I was reading a text on my MacBook and that was incredibly unprofessional of me. But I'm gonna grab my MVP version three because it's the most retro vapey kind of uh, device that I can find. And the first thing I wanna do is, uh, well, it won't let me turn down the wattage, will it? Oh yes, it will. I'm gonna turn the wattage all the way down to 10 watts because during this time, that's all we had was 10 freaking watts. Cardo tanks, my friends. Cardo tanks. Once upon a time, this was the shit. This is how this is how Pro Sauce vapors vaped. Um, this is a oh god damn it! <laughs> Every time, this is how Pro Sauce vapors vaped. This was a Cardo tank, and the Cardo tank was oh yeah, bleh. the Cardo tank was uh, it was a thing of beauty. It was just a simple tank, uh, plexi, no, not plexi, uh, 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 p, 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 t, p, t, p, t, f, e, I don't remember, plastic tank, two Delrin top and bottom caps like this, look how cool, oh, look how cool that tank is, this was the first, like, 
tank. When, I mean tanks. Tanks were tanks. This was a tank. So what you'd do is you'd grab a cartomizer. And this one I believe came from Eichenvape. And these used to be my favorites. Oh, my favorites. But you could buy a five pack of these for about nine, ten bucks. And in that package, you'd probably get eh, one or two, at least one or two complete duds that, uh, that didn't work at all. But, ooh, I'm going to use the condom method to fill it up. I'm so excited. But uh, you took the little condom pieces off of your cartomizer, like this. They came, they came with little cardo condoms, as we call them. And you used these to fill them back up. And so what's on the inside, if you've never seen a cartomizer, you can see Let's Tear Apart Some Cartomizers video I did a long, long time ago. But this was your cartomizer. And this one happened to be pre-punched. I'm going to try and see. Do you see those two holes there? Well, if you didn't have a pre-punched cartomizer, you could use this. And this came from Vaporfection as well. In fact, it still has their logo on it. This was a carto punch. So you slid your carto into this little slot right here and then used... I'm going to... Let's see if I can make these holes just a little bit bigger. You used... Uh, you used the pin. You used this screwy thing here to punch a hole in your uh, in your cartomizer and it was a it was a wonderful and glorious thing yes oh yeah right there take it take it beautiful that's a beautiful thing and this was a way to punch holes in your cartomizer without denting it completely um for a while i used a, a nail and a hammer for a while i used uh a Dremel for a while. I also used uh, what else did I use? I used that uh, that saddle valve that I bought from uh, from Home Depot. I can't believe I did that, but you know we did the best with what we had available to us. So I'm going to punch another hole in here in this cardomizer. Cardo punch. Still have my cardo punch. So now we have a cardomizer with two solid holes in here. Oh, do I still have my cardo filler? Oh no. Well, I'm gonna have to do this the hard way because I don't have my cardo filler anymore. Oh, I apologize, I'm just looking for something. Oh man, what a pisser. I had a cardo filler and it was uh That sucks, man. Oh, here it is. I found it. This. This was for filling up your cartomizers. And it looks weird, but man, it worked like you can't imagine. Um, drip tips also very helpful. But what you did is, so I'm going to fill up my cartomizer right now. So these cartomizers weren't designed for heavy VG juices. Back in the day, all we used was like 50-50 juices. There wasn't a lot of high VG juices. There was Wrath who was doing 100% VG. There was Alien Visions that was doing 100% VG, and I think that's all. Um, when Amber Juice first came out, all we had were 50-50 juices, which we still carry to this day for people that use cartomizers or clearomizers. Um, so this is going to make a mess. I just know it. But what you did is you filled up your cartomizer condom with liquid and then you took your tank or you took your cartomizer and you pressed it down into here. And what that did is that forced juice up all through the polyfill in there. Yep, I can see it. I can see it in there. You gave it a couple of presses kind of up and down. I filled this. Oh, I can see it at the top of the cartomizer right there, just pooling up. So I would kind of massage this up and down making sure all the poly filling is nice and wet and what you can do is suck on it blow on it i know i know that's what she said but you want to get all that poly fill in there nice and wet blowing out your cartomizers was a uh, a routine in of itself because it would constantly 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 get flooded constantly get flooded oh god this just takes me so far back so we have a full cartomizer full of juice i'm gonna throw this little condom away down here in my trash can then 
what you did is you took your uh, your cardo filler, you put this on the end of the cardomizer. Eventually, yes, it just it's supposed. To, there it goes, snaps in, kind of like that. It's kind of like a drip tip, but it's designed to fill up your tank. So then you take your tank and you put your cardomizer into the tank, only about that far, right? Only about that far. So that little nubbin head is sticking out there. I can't believe this is happening right now. And then you take your juice and you press it in there and you fill up this tank. Oh yeah, this is some old school shit right here. Get your tank full and then you continue pressing this the rest of the way through. Boom, just like that. And now you have a tank with a cardamizer in it and that cardamizer is full of juice and your tank is full of juice. So then what you did is you put this on your uh, your device. I'm just gonna be putting it on here, on this. Uh, take that off. Check the ohms, 2.2 ohms, which believe it or not, once upon a time, that was low resistance. So I have this set to 10 watts. I'm gonna pop a drip tip on there. Cardo tank, baby, Cardo tank. And that's, that's how you vaped. This would last you a while, you know what I mean? You could use this during the day. Up until the Cardo tank existed, what we had were direct dripping atomizers like that HH357, only not even that advanced, like just junky Chinese atomizers that you would drip on and vape and drip on and vape. And they were just varying resistances. We didn't know about resistance or voltage or wattage back then. You just put it on a mod and hopefully it worked. And hopefully the resistance was at a good spot where you could get some nice production. Then variable voltage existed and now you could adjust the voltage because once again, we didn't know. Thank you, Chewbacca. Once again, we didn't know what the ohms were. We were just adjusting the voltage you know, to taste, which is kind of something that still happens. The airflow for this cardamizer is just horrendous though. Super, super stiff. Super, super stiff. I wonder, gosh, I wish I had a better mod with some better airflow. Oh, it does have slots cut in it. See, it has good airflow, but um, I don't, oh, you know what I have? I have, an, I have an Ego style battery. So this is the Inokin VV version four. How's the airflow? Much better. Much better. Up, oh, set to 15 watts. Let's turn it down to like uh, 12 watts. 12.5, let's live on the edge. Yes, yes, 12.5 watts. This, this is more retro, even though this is a newer battery, but it looks more retro. That was it, Cardo tanks. And these aren't even that old. That even, This isn't even that retro of a vape. It's just something that nobody uses anymore and nobody really knows about it. I mean, there's vapors who are just today getting into vaping who start off on an RDA or start off on a K-Fun. And it's like, man, remember Cardo tanks? I would still rock this. That's great. In fact, I think the wattage could stand to go up a little bit. Let's not get too crazy here. Let's just go to 13 watts here. You had to prime them. You had to suck juice in, and you could see little bubbles coming out. Kind of like uh, the K-Fun when you, when you take a drag and it, and it goes in and then bubbles come back out. That's the same thing you had to do with this. You had to look for the bubbles. Nope, that's too high. I'm going to turn this back down. Um, what my favorite setup was, was a silver bullet with a kick at 10 watts and a cardo tank on top. Ah, I could not have been happier. That would have been the greatest possible vape for me. So it's giving me 4.7 volts, 10 watts, 2.3 ohm cardamizer. 
uh, on a Vaporfection Cardamator tank. Oh, and it's fitting that I'm using Cardamator Crush Juice. It all comes together full circle. Those are some clouds, bro. This is what we did. This is what we did. Everybody. I remember... I remember it was at the Philadelphia Vape Fest that I saw the first Cardamizer tank. Jason from ENS Electronic Sticks had one. And he showed it to me, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, there's a Cardamizer inside your tank. And he's like, yeah. I'm like... How did it get there? What, What is this sorcery? He's like, it's a Cardo tank. Map makes them. He's making a Cardo tank now. I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my head around how this worked. I'm like, so the, the juice goes into the cardamizer? Does it just flood like crazy? He's like, no, no, the juice, it just soaks it up, and then you can vape it. It doesn't flood at all. I'm like, God, it seems like that would just flood just like crazy. He's like, no, it doesn't doesn't flood vapes great like wow that's that's a game changer right there i mean cardo tanks can you imagine and i bought a glass cardo tank from liquid express at the first VaporCon meet when i got my bam i was using kicked bam kicked 26 650 bam with a cardo with a glass cardo tank on top vaping cj's uh what's his super diacetyl juice monkey cream out of a cardo tank oh Oh, it was heaven. It was just heaven. Just heaven. I just loved it. So yeah, cardo tanks. Cardo tanks were a thing. You had to punch them yourself. You had to fill them up with the condom. It was this whole process. In fact, I could probably build a dual coil and wick it on an RDA now faster (laughs) than I can open up a cardo, punch holes, fill it up, Put it in the tank, fill up the tank, and plug it on a mod. I can probably... In fact, I'm very sure. Very, very sure I could do that. But yeah. Cardo tanks, dude. I'm going to keep this one on here for now. Just for the sake of uh, of retro vaping. But yeah. That was some retro vaping segment. Um, I don't know what we're going to move into next. I'm going to have a toot on this and think real fast. I'm not going to be able to get to any viewer mail today. But I do want to squeeze in a review for a mech mod. Um, review time graphic. All right, so I wanted to talk about this uh, mech mod. It's made in Japan. It's called the Ramble. I'm not going to waste any time. We're going to go straight into an up close segment. One of the things that I discovered on Reddit is people literally do not watch my videos because I say uppy closey. Because of that one phrase, uppy closey, people won't watch my videos. That just seems so very strange to me. That'd be like not listening to a band because the singer has short hair. Pfft, short hair. I don't want to listen to them. What? Singer's got puka shell necklace? Pfft, they can't be good. I'm not going to listen to them. Just seems weird. So yeah, I say uppy closey. Something you're going to have to deal with. I'm not going to waste any time. We're going to go straight into an uppy closey segment. All right. Well, we're uh, we're here up close for some vlog uppy closey time. Can anybody hear the birds in the background? Yeah, there's a, there's there's like a, a swarm of birds outside my place right now. I have my windows open. I apologize for the inconvenience of the bird sounds. I just picture the birds outside going, "Oh, I'm sorry. I bothered you with our lovely singing." No matter. This is the Ramble Mech Mod. So this is a telescoping mech mod. I actually got this at ECC, and it kind of just never got a video. Uh, I talked to the creator of it for maybe 0.4 seconds. I actually got this mod on my way to the bathroom, if that makes any sense at all. But it is a uh, it is a mech mod. Oh, that's the edge of my battery I'm seeing. It is a mech mod. It's a telescoping mech mod. It's made in Japan. It's all very nicely fit and finished. Um, Let's just take a look at it from top to bottom. We'll get into the details when we get back out to normal view. 
There's your top contact right there, which on mine is uh, is very, very dirty. The appeal to me of a telescoping mod is that uh, there's nothing to fiddle with up here. So if I take something like this Competition Kennedy, which I feel looks very cool on here, I simply put this on and then I adjust this pin up to touch the battery or to touch the to touch the battery to touch the atomizer and that's it you just screw that up I know that's wow that contact is really dirty I need to clean that hard um, that screws up to uh, to touch the contact and that's uh, that's basically it once you screw this on you can take up for battery rattle with the telescoping feature right here but we'll get to that in a second the segment does come off if you wanted to use a smaller 400 350 sized battery makes for a very very much smaller mech mod and the ramble actually does get quite quite small let's see how low it will go yes something like that now that is a tiny little mech mod but I like to use it in 18650 because I like to rock those super sub ohm coils because I'm that guy now. But that segment does come off so you can rock it with lower batteries. Let's take the telescoping part all the way out. It's just threaded on the bottom. And as you can see along the bottom here, along the bottom, there are uh, vent holes right there. You see those holes machined? on the inside and on the outside holes 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 those are all vent holes the threads are uh incredible nice and smooth very very nice and smooth very very nice threads all around all of this has very very nice threads the locking feature additionally has nice threads i haven't got this stuck in the up or down position that's up push the button that's down can't push the button no big deal, no harm, no foul. The spring is quite, quite soft, but it does, no matter where you press it, press in very, very evenly. Even if I'm over here on the edge, even, even. The threads on it are nice, but the spring, like I said, is really, really soft. So if you have a battery in here and a heavy atomizer, it's going to uh, possibly fire under its own weight. It's happened to me a bunch of times. That's the bottommost segment right there. Additionally, this switch is something that I don't want to take apart. Um, it's, just a, it, it's just a switch. There's a Delrin cap here that the battery will sit on just like that. Again, machined very, very nicely. And it has a little stopper clip right there that stops it from going down all the way. Up, down, up, down. There's no real way to adjust the throw on this. Um, it just, it is what it is. That's how far it goes up. And that's how far it goes down and I'm sure that you can uh, take a Phillips head in there or not a Phillips head but like an Allen key screw that out see the whole switch oh, I don't really want to do that should I do it for the sake of science I might do it hold tight all right well if I want to I couldn't anyway because TIL I don't have the right size Allen key to even take that out uh, my biggest one is this one which I don't, I don't have a set. All of these are from atomizers that I've got that come with with little, uh, you know, hex keys, little Allen keys, and uh, none of them, even my biggest one, <laughs> doesn't uh, doesn't fit in there. So I apologize. Switch ain't coming apart right now. But we're gonna put this all back together. Like I said, the threads, oh, are just very very nice. That just went on there, no problem at all. I guess you could put this one on next. No, because you need the, uh, the telescope. So I'm going to telescope this in to about right there. I'm going to put this back on. And I'm going to put my battery in there. I'm using a, a vamped 40 amp cell, which isn't actually a 40 amp cell. It's actually a 20 amp cell. And regardless, it doesn't even matter because these vamped cells kind of suck. Uh, I've been having a lot of issues with them uh, not fitting in mods. Additionally, uh, the battery life on them has been less than impressive. So once again, atomizer's on there. This is tightened up. Put this all together. Screw, screw, screw. Telescope this down until it's just snug. Perfect. No battery rattle. It's awesome. That's the size of your mod. The Kennedy looks cool on there. One thing, this is 23 millimeters around, so you do get a slight... Uh, you get a slight lip there. Not a huge deal. Not a deal breaker. But now I know that uh, my Kennedy coils will just fire like crazy. And that's uh, that's awesome. So yeah, that's the ramble up close and personal. Let us, uh, let's get back out to normal view and we'll talk about it a little bit more. 
So yeah, as you can see, I changed the top cap on my Kennedy Competition mod to the straight up stainless steel, which, uh, I mean, it matches uh, almost perfectly. I love the brass on there. I think the stainless steel just makes it look much cooler. This is a great, this is a great mech mod. Um, I re what? Come on, stop it. <laughs> I, uh, I really like it. I, I really enjoyed using it. The build quality on it is very, very nice. Um, the problem that I'm having with this mech mod is the price. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. It is ridiculous. Um, where is it? Yes. So it brought up kickashvapes.com. The Ramble mech mod, $245. $245. Oh, as much as I like this mech mod, I can't in good conscience recommend it for $245. Don't get me wrong. Very, very well made. It's manufactured in Japan by Promist. Um, the threads are buttery smooth. Oh, and they are. Just even that lock ring right there it's just gliding. It's just glidey as hell. Uh, the button stroke and touches are like a feather. It is neither too heavy nor too light. I would agree with that. And gives you the perfect touch. We guarantee that you will love this Japanese quality. Constructed from solid 303 grade stainless steel. Telescoping fits an 18350 with a kick. 18490 with a kick. And an 18650. Mechanical operation, solid brass contacts, oversized adjustable positive contact, spring-loaded bottom firing switch, reverse threaded locking ring, 23 millimeters. Um, you can get it mixed, brushed, or polished stainless steel. Package includes an Allen key to disassemble the switch. I don't have that size Allen key, as you saw. This is such a nice mod. It is so nice. It is it is uber nice. It is just a nice mod. It feels nice. It's nice to use. I like the telescoping feature. I like the vent holes. I even like the shape of it. I like the locking ring. Oh, that locking ring just feels beautiful. Locking ring unlocks the switch. Oh, it's so great. Hits well. Hits really nice. I friggin' love this mod. The problem is the price. Two forty-five is a lot. I can't. I can't do two forty-five. I can't. Nick says no to two forty-five. Vape budget hands. If you have two forty-five, if you have exactly two hundred and forty-five dollars, and you're like, I need a Japanese-made mech mod. Oh, brother, I've got some good news for you. That exists, and it's right here, and it's called the Ramble. Unfortunately. I just, uh, I just can't get into the price. All the threads, so smooth. Top cap, it's like a joy. I just wanna do this. I just wanna keep doing this because it's so nice. And that lock switch, oh, I just wanna keep doing this because it's so nice. It's just so glidey. Even the telescoping bit, oh, very, very smooth. Very, very glidey. This whole mech mod just screams High quality, high performance, high asking price. That's that's the trade-off. This is obviously going to be a somewhat short review, as uh, as you're noticing right now. But yeah, it is what it is. It is the Ramble Mech mod. I will post a link in the description to kickashvapes.com, where if you're so interested, you can absolutely pick up your own Ramble Mech mod made in Japan by Promist. Um, I am going to give this away, but there's no point in me saying that because it has already been spoken for. Unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. Um, I am going to do some giveaways, hopefully in uh, in the near future. I've been getting some stuff. I've got a Segeli 150 watt that I'm just, ooh, ready to give away. We're ready to give that away. And, and you know, as, as more time goes on, I have less and less need to hold on to mods. Um, I'm giving away my Emac to somebody else. I'm giving away my old Vapor Shark RDNA to somebody else. Things are just going out of here left and right. And, you know, I, I loved the RDNA. I loved it. It's a DNA 30. It works fucking great. I have a DNA 40. I don't need that one anymore. And there's another Vapor out there who probably needs it much more than I do. So, tons of stuff. Tons of stuff going away. Um, 
don't email me and ask uh, for stuff. When stuff's getting given away, I, I will give it away, and you will know that I'm giving it away. Um, occasionally, people uh, do like to tug at my heart strings, and uh, you know, I get a lot of stories about how someone doesn't have any money or. They just lost their job and they're back on cigarettes now because all they have is an EVOD tank and it doesn't work. And uh, I, I, I give in. <laughs> I buckle like a belt. And uh, it's just a thing that happens. I'm giving away my old Segeli 100 watt because, again, I don't really need it anymore. Um, but, yeah, so things are getting given away. This Ramble mod is getting given away and it is already spoken for. No big deal. I'll post a link in the description to where you can check it out. Should we use the, the lock ring one more time? Oh, oh, that lock ring. Oh, I want to touch you all day long. Anyway, it is it is what it is. Uh, I believe that is going to come to the end of my vlog now. Um, got some very, very cool stuff coming up in the future. One thing that I'm going to try to focus on a little bit more is stuff for new people. Um, so things like that VV version 4. Um, I've got some other starter kits, ego style devices, uh, you know, that are working. Uh, like I said, there's the sub tank stuff coming up. I still have a lot of box mods, the Segelis, uh, the Sick Clouds, the Dot mod from Petri, which I'm having, you know, only a slight love affair with. Um, some other rebuildable atomizers and the like are all going uh are all going to be there. I'm going to be uh, also traveling. Um, hope to have a normal review schedule uh, plan, but I'm going to be traveling a lot. Um, there's the SoCal Vape Expo, which is close by. There's Vapor Dynasty Expo. There's Vapor Slam, ECC, Vape Bash. Um, additionally, I'm going to be in Tampa. Excited for all these vape meets, but yeah, still have a lot of cool stuff coming up you know what i mean review wise i still got a lot of stuff coming up uh very cool uh vlog wise um I, I said this on reddit and i'll say it again my heart is in the vlog the vlog is where my heart is i love doing it and i love uh you know uploading them and it's just great it's a great experience i love the long format videos because I, there's a lot of information out there that needs to get out there and I'll throw in a review and we'll do some first impressions and we'll talk about beer and it's great and we hang out so that's what I got thank you thank you thank you so much everybody for watching thank you for your continued support during these weird times I hope to run into you at a meet someday but until then I gotta ramble we're gonna keep on vaping Let's do some Kylie babes. Not bad. Been practicing, Shelly. Okay.